Hi there and welcome to NLP and Leadership. Today I'm going to be sharing with you some dynamic skills and understandings about how you can utilize neuro-linguistic programming to improve your leadership skills. Hi, I'm Dr. Heidi Heron. If we haven't yet met, welcome to NLP Worldwide. Leadership is one of the hottest topics today. Being able to be a leader, a dynamic leader, is something that so many people are aspiring to. I recently saw a Facebook post and it said something along the lines of, management is about your business. Leadership is about your people. In a meeting that I was in a few weeks ago, we were talking about leadership and what makes a leader. Around the table, it was absolutely unanimous that leaders can be made it's not just a born behavior or trait. But being a leader isn't something that somebody needs to be appointed to. Being a leader can be a way of being in life. You can lead as a parent, as a friend. You can lead as a manager. You can lead in a team. You might be a team leader and not even have people reporting to you. When we have the ability to be a leader, this oftentimes means leading by example. And there are a few different aspects of neuro-linguistic programming that goes into building those dynamic leadership skills. And I'd like to share a few of these with you today. In fact, this is the initial video of a larger series about NLP and leadership. Let me give you an insight into NLP and how NLP can tie in with leadership. NLP or Neuro Linguistic Programming is a tool that can be utilized in communication, personal development, conversations, coaching, leadership, management, parenting, so many different things. The skills of Neuro Linguistic Programming are based on understanding how the language of a person's mind creates the programs that we run in life. We have programs for everything, how we breathe, how we make decisions, how we manage others, how we connect, how we get motivated, demotivated, fall asleep, do everything that we do. I'd like you to think about a manager who in the past has led you. Now, management, as I mentioned before, is sometimes about managing a business, managing a task, managing a process where leading is about influencing, being influential with someone, being a leader to someone, walking your talk, being authentic, being congruent, being someone that other people look up to. So I'd like you to think of a manager who has been a leader for you. I remember my first job was at the Golden Arches and there were a number of managers there. But in my mind, I can think of all of those managers, only two that stood out as leaders to me. And these are people that I remember that I wanted to be like, I wanted to aspire to be. They made me better. They helped me understand the real meaning behind authentic work ethics. And it wasn't because they, they pursued or pushed buttons or were mean, that was managing. I don't know why they had to be mean, they just sometimes were. But that leadership was about inspiring, about encouraging. And my guess is they knew nothing about neuro-linguistic programming. They knew about people. And they knew that in order to get the best out of their staff, they themselves needed to be their best. So as you think about that manager that you had that was a leader, did you look up to that person? Did they inspire you to be better, to be more, to be more connected with you, to do more? And then on the other side, I want you to think about a leader who was just managing a task. Sorry, a manager who was just managing a task. Did you look up to that person? I remember there was one in particular manager way back in those days that I was quite scared of. And I think he probably thought, I am a good leader. People do what I say. But we were scared of him. And we did what, he did what he said because there were consequences if we didn't. Now, 
from these two people that I can remember that were leaders. There were consequences if we didn't do what they wanted us to do, but it was personal consequences. Consequences that we wouldn't be as good as we wanted to be. Consequences that we would let someone down and that would take away from who we ultimately were. As I developed my skills in business, in neuro-linguistic programming, in just communicating with other people, I have learned so much that leadership starts from within. So when we can utilize neuro-linguistic programming, the ability to understand the patterns and programs that someone has created because of the language in their mind, Everything that we say or see or taste or touch or smell creates part of that neurology for us. A chemical reaction happens and it starts to create us. It starts to create how we interact in the world. It starts to create how we're motivated, how we're driven, how we are inspired. Leaders, good leaders, exceptional leaders can understand how the language of the mind of who they are leading and what they are leading, how to tap in and inspire greatness. If I could offer you one gift, one gift, it would be the ability to inspire greatness in people. There are three things that I would like to talk about briefly today, and then the series goes into each of these in more in depth. These topics, these aspects of utilizing NLP to be a leader, include being your authentic, congruent self. The second is being able to respect a person's model of the world. And the third is to meet them at their own bus stop. Authenticity. When you can be your true, authentic self, just being who you are, walking your talk, living your dream, that is inspiring. The leaders that I've met that are exceptional leaders in big business, in small business, and not in business at all, have human problems. And they live those problems, but they don't live those problems in a way that has to blame other people. They find their own solutions. They live with and become a better version of themselves because of life. They usually have a vision for themselves. They know where they want to go and they have a pathway to get there or they're willing to find out. So many leaders that I meet have coaches. Sometimes I am their coach. And being able to have that vision of where they want to go, that pathway to get there, they're willing to do what it takes to get there. So they're leading by example. They are being the change they want to see in the world. I'm curious, what change do you want to see in the world? Do you have a path for where you want to go? Do you even know where you want to go? Because if we don't have a clear understanding, as Stephen Covey said, start with the end in mind. When we have a pathway, we know where we'll want to go in business, in love, in relationship, in money, in time, in our own personal journey. And are you willing to do what it takes to get there? Are you authentic? Are you talking your talk and walking your walk? One thing that we see throughout the world is this political game where people are not authentic and not congruent and we can see through that. We like to be led. We like to interact and we like to be, what's a good word for it? A good word would be inspired by people who are inspirational because they walk their talk. They are living their own dream. So for you to be congruent, that's that alignment, that wholeness. When you can be congruent, that doesn't mean that you're happy and peppy all the time. It, it means you know where you're going and you know how to get there. And even if you don't completely know the exact steps of how to get there, you are willing to do what it takes to get there. You're not blaming. You're not putting it on somebody else. You're not finding somebody else to solve a problem. You're doing that. Perhaps you're delegating, perhaps you are asking for assistance, perhaps you're getting coaching, perhaps there is some outside influence, but you know as that authentic, congruent leader that you are in charge of getting yourself to the destination. NLP can help create that, as that aspect of authenticity and congruency because we can peel back those layers 
of interferences, of blocks, or of beliefs that hold us back from that total congruency. In yet another video that's, that's coming soon, you will be able to understand how to peel back some of those layers, how to identify them in the first place. The second aspect of utilizing NLP in a leadership capacity is understanding and respecting the model of the world of the people you are leading. Each and every one of us has a model of the world. In NLP, a model of the world is our own beliefs and values, our concepts, our view of what's going on. We look at oftentimes an NLP communication model. And the NLP communication model, which is up here on my wall, or it's up here on my wall, and if you've learned NLP with us in the, in the past, then you know this communication model up here to be known as Sally. And the method of Sally ultimately says that we have a base of filters in our unconscious mind. Our unconscious mind is that non-thinking part of our mind. And the unconscious mind, about 90% of our mind is our unconscious mind, that non-thinking, non-judgmental, non-reasoning part of our mind. It runs our body, it stores our beliefs, it stores the memories, and it keeps us going. The filtering process that every single bit of information comes into our awareness from is filtered through our beliefs, our history, our memories, our programs, our meta-programs, which we'll talk about in just a moment. And all of this, where we've been, who we are, socioeconomic status, the parents we have, the siblings we have, the teachers we had and still have, all of this creates our model of the world. And depending on our model of the world, we will automatically distort, delete, and generalize information to make it fit for us. Now, this is important. This is important when we're talking about respecting somebody's model of the world because each of us look at something in a different way. We will each take a different scenario or the same scenario and look at it a little bit differently. We may say the same, but there's going to be aspects of that one thing that we see differently. As a leader, you will understand this innately. You will understand that everyone has their own point of view. They come to conclusions because of our history, our learnings, our memories, where we're from, where we're at, what we're doing. And that model of a person's world isn't right or wrong, it just is who they are. And as a leader, when you can respect someone model the world by saying, hey, I know where you're at and I understand how you got here. We can then start to expand someone's model of the world. What I have seen by people who are trying to be leaders, but really they are managing a process, is they're being too directive. They're saying, here's what you need to believe. Here's something how you need to act. Here's something you need to do. Now, if you are managing and you're managing a task, managing a process, that might be relevant. But if you want to lead, if you want to inspire, we need to respect somebody's model of the world. Understand that they are where they are, they are because of their history, their rich history, their values, their beliefs, their memories, their history, everything that makes them unique. And when we can understand that, we can then help somebody to grow, to learn, to flourish. Because we're not saying where you're at is incorrect, we're saying where you're at is where you're at. Let's grow from there. Respecting somebody's model of the world, as I said, comes innately to most leaders, but it also can be a skill that is taught. Understanding that when somebody is a bit different than us, when they're doing something that we don't do, it's not wrong. It's just their way. It's their model of the world. And if it's not appropriate, then we lead instead of manage. We inspire and encourage and we help somebody to grow. And when we are that authentic, congruent self, we are inspiring somebody else to be authentic and congruent themselves. Leaders build leaders. Leaders build leaders. The third aspect that I'd like to share with you today and that we will explore further in another video within this series is meet some, meeting someone at their bus stop. One of my trainers, 
Shelly Rose Charvet. Shelly has a program called Lab Profiles, Language and Behavioral Profiling. And she often utilizes the term, meet somebody at their bus stop. It goes hand in hand with their model of the world. Each of us have that different viewpoint. And one of the things that we're filtering through are we call meta programs. Our meta programs are a set of, of different strategies that we come to understanding things. We make decisions with our meta programs. Meta, by the, by the way, is a, a Greek word that roughly means beyond. And so we're going beyond our general programs. And we're looking at different aspects of it. Is someone more detailed or big picture? Are they moving towards what they want or away from what they don't want? Are they noticing the sameness or difference within something? And there's about 60, six zero different NLP meta programs that we look at. And by understanding some of these concepts, we have a better ability to show up at somebody's bus stop and wait for the bus with them at their bus stop. Not saying, hey, I'm big picture, you need to speak big picture with me, but saying, you know what, I understand that you might be more detailed, let me get into the dynamics of this. Understanding that someone might be motivated more towards the benefits versus the consequences. And so instead of making somebody do what I want to do, I'm going to lead and inspire by meeting them where they are. When we have that ability to meet somebody at their own bus stop, to connect with them where they already are growing and flourishing, we can speak their language. When we can speak their language, talk their talk, again, we can encourage them to walk their walk. And we can encourage ourselves to be that authentic, congruent self, to be able to respect our own model of the world while we're teaching, inspiring, and leading people to do the same and also helping others to recognize that they have flexibility in their behaviors, their attitudes, their beliefs, so that we are inspiring, leading leaders to also lead. So there are a lot of different aspects as well. Sometimes we get in our way because in our own way from being a leader because we get wrapped up or stuck in too much of the content. Sometimes it's about we're starting to manage a process instead of leading people. And when we can keep that balance and understand the difference between managing a process and leading people, knowing that if we step into that state and space of authenticity and congruency, when we can respect a person's model of the world and lead from their space, help them grow, shift, change a perspective, or adapt our own model of the world to meet someone else's because you know what oftentimes people have a better way of doing something than we are that growth mindset is a huge aspect of being a great leader most great leaders that i meet say something along the lines of i'm willing to grow i'm open to being inspired myself are you open to being inspired yourself my guess is yes, otherwise you wouldn't be watching this. You wouldn't be learning about something else. But when we also then have that ability to meet someone where they're at and lead from their perspective, the possibilities are endless. I have helped so many people either move into leadership roles, official ones, or simply develop their leadership skills. And oftentimes the best leaders that I meet are not in a leadership role. They just are leaders. They're inspirational, they're influential, and they're dynamic in the way that they live their lives with that goal in mind and a pathway to get there authentically and congruently. Now, that being said, when we are not feeling up to the task, when we're not feeling our best, when there's something holding us back, the authenticity and that authentic congruent leader acknowledges that. They acknowledge, you know what, something's not quite going right. What can I do about it? So they are more aware of themselves, which also is that growth mindset. Their ability to be accepting of, hey, this is where I am and I need to grow from here. And then they step into that space of action and they do something, they grow, they learn themselves. And that is inspiring. To see a leader 
from where they were to where they can be. And the people below them that are also being inspired to be dynamic leaders. If you're living your best life congruently, learning and growing, not pretending to be the best or have it all together, but learning and growing and just putting your best foot forward, you can inspire by living your life and using your voice. If there are two things that I would like to leave you with today, they would be this. One, be your best self. Lead by example. And two, encourage and inspire others to do the same. Leaders oftentimes are made and not just born. When you can live your best life and you can encourage others to leave theirs, you will be leaving a legacy for years to come. Leaders inspire leaders. Thank you very much for sharing your time with me today. And I hope to see you on the rest of this Leadership with NLP series. Thank you.